How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel. As you can tell by the thumbnail and the title of this video, we're going to be talking about a knife that has uh, taken YouTube and the knife community kind of by storm. Um, there's a lot of, I'm going to say it's probably going to be short-lived hype, but there's a lot of hype around this knife in particular, and that is the uh, unnamed Ozark Trail uh, folding axis bar, crossbar lock knife in D2 steel. Um, so this is not an in-depth video. This is kind of an overview and impressions video. Um, these are actually kind of hard to get um, as of recently. I think once the hype dies down, these will be a little easier to get. Um, obviously made by Ozark Trail. Um, you obviously a Walmart uh, company. Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions about this knife. Some things that I want to talk about and I want to address and just kind of some of my overview and impressions. This is, again, like I said, no means a um, in-depth video. And we're going we're, we're gonna to talk about um, its comparison to the Benchmade Bug Out. Now, there's a lot of videos on a versus video versus or you know comparison whatever you want to call it between this knife and the bug out i'm going to kind of give my thoughts on that i will probably put out an actual versus video once i get a little more accustomed to this knife and give it kind of a fair use but uh, we're going to kind of talk about that component as well so let's kind of get right into it this is about a Close to $10 knife, uh, $9 and some change, plus taxes, going to be about $10. And I think, obviously, one of the big re reasons why this knife gets a lot of hype is because, for the most part, a lot of the things that, it's, that it has is very comparable to a lot of knives that are 10 times the price, 10 times plus the price of this knife. And we're going to talk about... Um, some some practicality and some some realistic components, but as far as a very inexpensive ten dollar knife, this is very impressive to someone that is used to higher end knives, higher end production knives. This sucker is pretty impressive. I think Ozark Trail is. Uh, secretly behind the scenes that they're paying attention obviously um to kind of give it a little example the the kind of previous ozark trail axis bar crossbar lock again this is around the time when the patent on the crossbar lock the axis lock uh went up so a lot of companies started to kind of make their own variants and ozark trail you know kind of being uh very interesting company decided to kind of take their stab at it. And this was released a few years ago. And this also took uh, the internet and the knife community by storm, kind of their first rendition, kind of interesting. There are some things kind of clunky about this one. Um, this obviously I, I believe was closer to around $5, $6. So this one's a little bit more, but from this version, from Ozark Trail taking on this kind of task, right? They improved the quality on this new version. I mean, I don't, I can't speak for every version, but I was honestly surprised when I got this, <coughs> how smooth. I mean, this, this is honestly, I'm not trying to be mean to Benchmade, but this is smoother out of the package than my Benchmade bug out. And there's some, uh, some reasons to that, but I mean, to get this Benchmade bug out this smooth, this took time to break in. It took some adjustment of the pivot, uh, some knife pivot lube. So that's kind of interesting. And, and that's partly <laughs> due to the fact that it has uh, ball bearings, I believe. I've, I've kind of glanced in there and it looks like there's ball bearings in the pivot. So it makes a very smooth action, which honestly, I was quite surprised for $10 to get this smooth of action is quite astonishing considering this one you know, a couple years ago, this is, this is kind of clunky. Uh, this is not super smooth. So kind of expecting this getting the, the knife, right? And it actually is quite smooth, very smooth on the action. Thumb studs, 
pretty good. And honestly, this uh, crossbar, kind of the actuator, the piece that you're gonna pull back, this is, they've definitely improved that as well. Um, if you can kind of see, this is a little more precise. It's a little more aggressive, but it works. This is kind of smoother, not super aggressive. And obviously that's probably gonna vary, but depending on uh, which one you get. And there's actually some modern uh, or mild, sorry, mild jimping up here on the knife blade, on the tang and on the handle. So they've taken a little bit more time and precision in this knife. I think they actually went to the drawing board and they're like, okay, a lot of people loved this thing. Some people were trying to compare this to the bug out. Well, let's take it a step further. Um, and that's kind of their attention. I mean, let's, let's just, there's no hiding this in terms of what Ozark Trail is trying to do. I mean, it's, it's not a carbon copy, but it's, it's pretty darn close in terms of its size, the ergonomics, the lines, everything. I mean, everything is, I mean, even the little lay in your hole is <coughs> practically identical, right? So pretty neat. So I was impressed with that. They say it's a D2 steel. Um, I, yeah, I mean, here's the thing about steels. I, I'm not a steel expert. I'm not a steel nerd. Um, but any type of steel, you can, you can have a steel in the various versions of steel, right? Different steel variants that have various compositions. That's one thing. How you heat treat the steel and how you grind the steel, the blade geometry, all of that's going to affect the performance of the steel. So I don't care what type of super duper crazy steel you have or what the steel properties say, they have to be heat treated the right way. And I don't know with a mass produced Chinese production model like this, how well this D2 is actually gonna compare to um, a better made D2 or better manufactured D2. So they say it's D2, okay, D2 tool steel. It is coated, so um, obviously a lot of, a lot of budget uh, knife companies, a lot of the quote unquote, cheaper knives, they always love to coat everything in this kind of paint coating. They, they always paint everything. Um, I don't know, it's, it's the tactical look, um, but it's always funny. They always paint everything. So good job. You, d you did a D2 steel and you put some type of protective coating on it. Um, you were probably going to do it regardless if it was a high stainless steel. Anyway, um, obviously the, right there, there's the stamp proudly, proudly made in China. Um, there's going to be some things on this knife that you're going to notice is a product of its, of its price and mass production. Okay. The biggest thing I always notice on these knives, including this one, even knives like this, you could maybe argue, okay, it's, it's meant to kind of have a reverse belly here to have kind of a more, um, large belly here and then kind of a inverted or reversed here, but not being intentional. I don't know if you guys can tell this, but I always notice this on these cheap knives, always down here, close to where the sharpening choil is. There is always, it's always more uh, ground down here. There's always kind of like a reverse grind. It's kind of like uh, a swoop inside, right? And I don't think it's intentional. It's not a pure, beautiful, straight grind like this. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but that's something you're gonna notice with really cheap knives like this is they're gonna have weird crap like that. Uh, that always bothers me, um, just a kind of a small pet peeve. It's still gonna cut, obviously, but it's just kind of a weird thing you notice on a lot of cheap knives. It's that weird kind of indent uh, grind. Um, that's just because this thing is going through and, and <coughs> getting spit out super fast. Uh, so that's one thing you notice. The biggest thing I want to notice is this is a thin behind the edge blade. I mean, this sucker is super thin. This is thinner than the bug out. Again, this is not a comparison video. I just want to kind of show some, some components here. I mean, this is thinner. It's kind of hard to tell in here. It is, especially up by the tip, it is, a, it is thinner than the bug out. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, obviously I've, I've seen some videos, people, uh, hard use testing this. Um, this isn't a hard use knife.
guys. Um, so if you see someone say, oh, the tip broke, it's the D2 steel. It's not meant to be a hard use knife, okay? It's not a fixed blade. This is an EDC, everyday carry, basic cutting task knife, okay? So that's kind of the, the steel, obviously very standard, um, pretty much a drop point. Got a little bit of flat, a little bit of belly, nice precise point in line with the pivot of the blade or pivot of the handle. Uh, so pretty standard on the blade. Let's talk about the handle a little bit. Um, this is obviously just a, you know, whatever plastic, okay? It's got some type of texturing, not anything crazy. It's still very slick. So it's by no means as good or grippy as uh, the Benchmade bug out, but it is noticeable enough and it is there enough to where it makes a difference between this. Like this is super slick. Like this is not, this isn't giving you any grip. This gives enough extra grip that it's actually noticeable. So good job, Ozark. Um, decent job on that. Obviously some Torx screws, which is nice. Let me see on this one. Do they do Torx? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did Torx. A um, little bit of jimping down here. Pretty nice, pretty comfortable in the hand and a lot of different grip variants. Um, so obviously, I mean, they're kind of carbon copying the uh, bug out. So of course the ergonomics are gonna be great. Uh, the bug out is a good knife and has had a lot of thought put into it. We have this, <laughs> loop over quote unquote deep carry pocket clip. It's always, it always is very comical when I see uh, quote unquote deep carry pocket clips when they're sitting below like this. Um, and maybe it's not intended to be a deep carry clip, but you might as well just make a standard clip at that point, like a standard, um, I don't have it on here, but a standard, like when you look at Spider Coast clips, it just comes up here and there's a flat part that sits there. I mean, you might as well do that. There's no, there's no point doing this um, if you're not actually going to make a deep carry. So that's kind of funny. Uh, but honestly, very impressed with this clip. Super strong retention. Um, and obviously the smooth scale, this is, it's a strong retention, but it's a smooth handle scale that this is going to slide in and out of the pocket really nice, but it's going to have good retention. Sometimes I notice when on these slicker knives like this, if you have a really bad retention on this, this thing's gonna slide out very easily. Um, so at least they made the retention quite strong. So not bad clip. It's a little bit more impressive than whatever turd of a clip they put on on this one. Um, so pretty neat and a pretty nice little lanyard hole. They did do a little bit of milling on the inside on the uh, full stainless steel liner. So this is a full stainless steel liner. So this knife is gonna be a little heavier just by, I haven't weighed it, I don't know the metrics on it, but um, it is a little heavier than the bug out. And I think that's partly due to the fact that they have full stainless steel liners, but they are milled, okay? Um, but it's, it's not a heavy knife. It's really not that heavy. I mean, it's a little heavier than, uh, the bug out. And this is the CF Elite, so this is even lighter than the traditional standard bug out. Um, but yeah, not bad. Um, I'm honestly quite impressed with the knife. And those are some of the features, just a little overview. Um, haven't done any big testing with this. Um, but let's talk about the, the whole hype with um, the bug out. People saying, oh, this beats the bug out. Um, this is better than the bug out. Some people say, no, this is <coughs> absolute garbage. The bug out's the way to go. I'll say, why would you buy this when you could buy, I don't know, a hundred of these for the same price? It's okay. Um, here's the thing, guys. And this is based on op first observation and, and honestly, probably just reality. Is this knife as good as the Benchmade bug out, whatever variant you want? Is it as good? Is it, is it as high quality? Let's talk about that. No, it is not. I don't care what people say. This knife is not better quality than the Benchmade bug out. Here's the deal. Is the Benchmade bug out really that much better, more practical of a knife than this one? Not really. 
So what do, what do I think this knife really does? This one, the Ozark Trail. I think this knife shows at a $10 range versus now what's really closer to like $180 range for the bug out. I think this knife shows that why not? We don't need, it doesn't need to be this expensive. Okay, it doesn't need to be this expensive for the bug out. You don't need to go this cheap. Okay, I don't know how this thing is going to hold up, but I know it's cheaply made. Can we have something in the middle? And some are going to argue, yes, we have something in the middle. Maybe the uh, Hogue Deca. Okay, but but still, I think this knife shows you can do a lot of these things for a much cheaper price. Can we have something in the middle, please? Something truly in the middle. It's possible. It's doable. Benchmade, sorry. You're, you're, you're having a harder time selling the price on this. Yes, are you better quality than this $10 made Chinese knife? Yes. Is that super impressive to say, like, at the end of the day, you scrape by by being a little higher quality? No, probably not. Okay, but I think this knife shows we can, we, there are ways to make something like this better. We don't need to go this cheap. We can go somewhere in the middle. So that's kind of my thoughts. Um, stay tuned for a versus video between these. Again, I haven't done proper testing. Just some of my overviews, impressions, and kind of thoughts on uh, what's been out there. So take that for what you want. Take it with a grain of salt. Your opinion is your opinion, and you're entitled to it. So thanks for watching again, guys, and uh, have a great day.